head coach is Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com here. Um, here. Here you are again, uh, getting ready to face another mobile quarterback um, with Jeff Sims. Um, Tech scored 46 points on Friday night. Um, first game without an interception for the freshman quarterback. Uh, just how much do you think that they have improved offensively uh, now in their second year under Coach Pattonode? Uh, tremendously. I think they've, um, uh, with the, you know, the, with the talent that they had there uh, already um, at uh, re receiver in particular and at running back, and uh, Jeff Sims and um, 21, 22, uh, you know, the other backs that they have on their roster, uh, you know, they're much different. And uh, their attack and uh, your, your spread – run game RPO, use the backs really well, run the ball, uh, get the ball to the backs out in space. Quarterback, uh, really good decision maker, going to be a special player. Uh, when it's all said and done, he's got size, uh, he's got arm strength, arm talent, <clears throat> can run, and uh, they do a good job of, of uh, you know, of moving him, taking advantage of his uh, skill set, have some design quarterback run game. Uh, as well, and you know, the receivers are on another planet from where they were a year ago, uh, just as far as their development and you know what they're doing with them. So uh, they'll, the Lions playing tough and physical. Uh, really, they imposed their will uh, in uh, in their last game, particularly in the fourth quarter uh, when they needed to uh, make some plays. They they just physically dominated uh, Louisville. So uh, playing with confidence. Uh, easily could have won uh, uh, against uh, when they played Syracuse, turned the ball over, turned the ball over against uh, Florida State, won that one. Uh, you know, really played a lot cleaner against uh, Louisville, and I'm, I'm remiss in uh, uh, their other loss. Uh, UCF just turned the ball over, didn't give themselves a, ch a chance. And, uh, you know, so, uh, but – uh, Jeff Sims is really impressive uh, for uh, playing four four games of uh, you know college football. You know where he's at right now, and and again, uh, you can tell they put a they give him a lot, and uh, but they help him as well. Hey, Brandon, it's Josh from the Post and Courier. How would you evaluate Landon Zanders Landon Zanders' performance so far this season? Um, I've been pleased with Landon. You know. Uh, like a lot of young guys, um, there's a lot to be excited about. He's got a really bright future. And um, uh, at times, you know, they got to clean up, you know, positioning and technique and, and eyes and things like that. So, um, uh, but excited about, you know, where he's going. And again, his attitude, how he has responded to some adversity and success both. Uh, He's a guy that, that uh, puts a lot of time in, getting ready week in, week out, and uh, cares, you know, what his teammates and his coaches think and takes a lot of pride in his performance. But a uh, real, real talented young guy. Brent, this is Gene in Charleston. Uh, mm -hmm. When you guys go good on good, your scrimmages and so forth, what's it like uh, trying to prepare for both Travis and Trevor and do your fellow defensive coordinators, mm -hmm. do you have some empathy for those guys? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those, the margin for error is very slim. And uh, we try not to, like, we don't ever go and say, okay, hey, let's take away Trevor today, or hey, let's take away Travis. We try to just do what we do and know that there's going to be plenty of bad that comes with the good. And, uh, but, you know, the, the precision, the explosiveness, um, the stress that they can create in both run game and the throwing game is, uh, it's tremendous. So, uh, to have empathy, uh, <laughs> uh, certainly understand, you know, what, you know, preparing for them, you know, what, what you can go through for sure. But, uh, you know, and they're both playing their best football of their careers right now as well. And, uh, you know, that's what, you know, being on our, being on the same team, that's what you're excited about too, is, is, uh, really see the, uh, the confidence and, and, uh, the cohesion, uh, of the unit and certainly them as, as players and leaders, you know, playing at a very, very high level right now. Brent, this is Matt with a say. What do you remember about Balin in the recruiting process and then 
what sold you on him as a linebacker and a guy that you thought could be a really good player for, for you guys? Um, well, I remember going to his high school and uh, uh, his coach uh, told me he played, he's, he's really excited about one. He thought he had one for, for a definite division one kid and he was, uh, he was playing corner and uh, he had played corner as a freshman. And so I was looking at him as a sophomore. And, and of course I, I knew there was a, a uh, Clemson connection as well. And I knew he was a good athlete. I knew he definitely wasn't a corner. And, uh, but I loved his versatility. They played him everywhere at Calhoun and uh, Coach Lamb. They did a great job, uh, a very, very good program there in uh, Calhoun, Georgia. And um, I just saw a really good athlete, played quarterback, played corner, played receiver, played safety, really didn't play much linebacker, but he had, he had a great frame and continued to grow. He came to camp. And uh, we evaluated him as both a safety and a linebacker and felt that if he, um, if he outgrew safety, he could definitely play linebacker. But he was very uh, bounce, uh, twitchy, had a lot of bounce to him. Um, he's changed direction. He's just very fluid, um, explosive, great kid, excellent student, and a leader. You know, just had great uh, leadership qualities and instincts. So, uh, you know. And then just has a really good bloodlines, great family, and uh, just tremendous athletes. But he's a winner. Very committed guy. Brent, Brad from Clemson SI here. Um, the players have raved about the game plan that you came up with Saturday night, and even the broadcasters noted it looked like you had weeks to prepare for Miami. Did you put any extra time? Was it the same amount that you normally prepare for a, propo a, a proponent? Or did you maybe spend some time during the bye week that you had recently? How did you prepare for the Hurricanes? Um, just we looked at everybody this summer, and um, certainly uh, we didn't feel like we didn't know that we were going to play Miami until I don't even remember when. It seems like we this season's been three years long. But uh, when we found out we were playing them, we started to try to you know look them up, and you know. When uh, we did, we went back and looked at Houston, and did uh, we had a group of guys look at uh, Derek King, and you know, so we could show we put a highlight tape together for our guys, and uh, I don't know, we just had a lot of meeting time uh, to look at a lot of people, and uh, so they were certainly one of the teams that we tried to do some uh, background work in case we played them uh, sometime later in the year, and then and then they jumped on our schedule. Uh, that wasn't real exciting. I think we, we dropped three unranked preseason unranked teams and picked up three preseason ranked teams. But, uh, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you always, I'm looking at everybody. I'm looking at people we don't play in and other conferences. I'm looking at defenses. We're looking at, you know, other offenses, knowing that people are copycat, whether you're looking at Ole Miss or you're looking at, you know, Georgia on defense, you know. So you're always trying to find ways. And if, even if it's like literally less than 10 minutes, hey, let me hey, throw that game on there real quick. They were doing some good stuff. Let me see what they were doing. Just try to see what other people are doing out there. And um, certainly uh, knowing the background of, uh, you know, Coach Lashley, and he had been with Coach Malls on at Auburn. We had a little bit of familiarity. Um, and then I worked with Mike Leach at, uh, at Oklahoma. Uh, as well, and having some air raid uh, principles in the throwing game as well. But, uh, you know, our guys just played. We played clean. You know, that's the biggest thing. We played clean and played aggressive and uh, did a good job of communicating and playing fast and, uh, you know, won the line of scrimmage. And we got a good offense that, you know, controlled the clock right out the gate too and puts pressure on people. So it goes, you know, uh, you know, it all goes together. Brent, this is Pete at AP. Piggybacking on that a little bit, I, it sounds like you've seen the explosion of points and yards out there. I heard one commentator yesterday say expectations for defenses have to change. And I, I, I can't imagine you agree with that, but how do you see combating this explosion of points and yards that seems to be everywhere except with you guys? Well, again, I think I think systematically people put you in a lot of conflict, and um, you know we we don't we don't sit around and spend any time thinking about well this is unfair or 
that's not realistic or whatnot. We, we go through our process on, on how we prepare and how we train and how we uh, execute. And um, we understand where the stress areas are and we try to protect ourselves in those areas uh, as we build you know, packages week to week and, and do what we do. Um, you know, I think, I think that, you know, if you look back at fall camp and, and, um, uh, some of the issues everybody around the country that's playing right now is going through is, uh, you know, not having a, a full allotment of people or, um, you know, some of the COVID issues or again, some of the, you know, we're, I'm sure we are like a lot of people banged up pretty good, um, during fall camp, you know, just cause you didn't have the same type of armor uh built if you will through the summer and and uh you know working out on your own is you know going to a personal trainer it's just different and uh, it's a different type of training so um you know maybe there was a little bit less contact uh i'm sure uh you know there was a little bit less here um we try to stick to it but uh, we had to get ready for the season too so uh, some of that's probably uh is in play here and uh, is what you're seeing and uh, but the, the the other side of it is you know that's that's that would be taken away from the efficiency and the precision and then what the college rules allow you know the NFL you cannot go down you can't pass the line of scrimmage with the offensive lineman blocking and then throw the ball in behind it's zero yards and in college it's three and uh, and most of the time it doesn't get called and uh, <laughs> pass three uh, just doesn't. And um, game happens fast, and it's hard to manage uh, from an official standpoint. So you get put in a lot of conflict. And, uh, and again, the precision of the quarterbacks and receivers, and again, the system uh, that 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 you know offenses um, again attack you with some of those run pass conflicts uh, puts them in a very uh, advantageous position. So it is you know what it is, but we just try to. Uh, you know, we just try to uh, have answers to what they do. That's and, and, and uh, to be good fundamentally, still stay aggressive, and to still try to. We haven't changed once we've gotten into the season in our routine. We haven't changed anything uh, up to this point. You know, and how we prepare. You know, week in week out, out on the practice field, physically. Hey, Chris, Brent, this is. Go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. I was just gonna say this. This is Matt. Um, just Coach uh, Coach Sweeney was saying last night that he feels like Tony's maybe underrated as, as um, a, a play caller and just an offensive mind and everything. I, I just wonder what you think of him and kind of the, the job he does. I know you're not focused on the offense, but just the job he does as a play caller and an offensive mind. Yeah, he's fabulous. Uh, he's really good. He's so smart, understands how to – uh, again, he understands how to put you in conflict. He understands defense. I think that's important. Really understand how defenses think, react, adjust. Uh, understands, you know, the DNA, the opposing play caller, and uh, he, he he can quickly see where weaknesses are, and uh, whether it's a player, it's a scheme, and and uh, he's really good at at setting things up, at attacking you where you're weak, uh, taking advantage of his personnel. And uh, doing a really nice job, you know, uh, with the, the presentation, he ended up putting his guys in, you know, again, uh, in a position of advantage, and uh, doesn't get rattled. Um, uh, he's got a great demeanor about him, but uh, yeah, he's 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 fantastic. Hey, coach, it's Trevor again. Uh, you were able to get Xavier Thomas in for three plays on Saturday night. Um, how how close is he uh, physically to to where he needs to be? I don't know. We put him in. He must be, he must be close. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's be a process, um, and uh, I think that's a day to day thing. And um, you know, excited to get him back out there. I think that's, uh, you know, I think he's probably missed that, um, uh, you know, tremendously. You'd have to ask him, but uh, you know, it's good to get him back out there. And, and uh, you know, over these next few weeks, we'll get him back to where he needs to be, hopefully, and, uh, you know, get him, you know, in, uh, you know, great uh, health and um, great conditioning and those types of things, you know, for, you know, by the time November rolls around here. But, uh, you know, very disruptive, explosive uh, player that, you know, can, can really help, you know, at a position where we're a little bit thin right now. 
Brian Brad from Clemson SI again. Uh, these cornerbacks that you have right now, how do they compare to some others you've had in the past in terms of just on ball skills, one on one winning matchups? Um, they've been great. You know, I don't know about comparing. I, I really don't think about it like that ever. Um, but I do, I love the, the attitude of this group, uh, the length of the group, um, the athletic ability, the ball skills, the coachability. Uh, it's a group that's very invested, probably our best cohesion as a cornerback group in chemistry that we've had um, uh, since I've been here. Um, more guys are capable of playing, you know, winning football. And uh, so that's exciting and it gives you a little bit of flexibility and creates the competition that brings out the best in everybody. But, uh, you know, we've got plenty of awards across the board. Uh, and uh, But what I love about them, they come to work every day and take ownership and a lot of pride in how they play and perform and, and let you coach them and correct them. And they can, for the most part, they can tell you, you know, what they did wrong well before you have to, uh, to, to correct them. So um, that's a very, uh, you know, that's a, a, that's a, that makes the, the you know, the job enjoyable uh, when you have a, a group of guys that are very connected and very invested uh, that way. Hey, Brent, it's Anna with 24-7. Um, Dabo said last night, and I kind of mentioned it a few times this season, that if he had to name one player that was ready to break out coming out of camp, it would be Joseph and Gata, and that he has a chance to be as good as any receiver that Clemson's had. Just We haven't been able to see a lot of them so far this season. I know Dabo said he's close. Just what have you seen from him in camp and, and kind of what makes him difficult to defend? Yeah, he's he's big. He's long. He plays like he's six foot eight. He's got a tremendous radius. Uh, just got a big physical presence. Um, he's he loves to block. Um, he can catch anything, you know, within you know a country mile. And he's got very very strong hands. Uh, just great body uh, uh, positioning and uh, ball skills. Um, he can one hand it, two hand it, high point it, dig it out. He can, he can do it all, and uh, well, he's got a great attitude. Just always excited to practice, and and uh, just a, a great presence to him. And um, he's just kind of scratching the surface on what he will be. But uh, you know, uh, they've had you know incredible success. You know, so far without him, he'll he's deadly. Uh, he creates a lot of problems. We'll take two, three more for coach. Brent. Um, this is Ken Seguiro with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, I was curious, I wanted to ask you about uh, Jeff Sims and uh, 21 Jameer Gibbs. Obviously, they're both freshmen, and, and you've seen a year place, you know, kind of what it can mean to give, a, you know, have a quarterback and a back together and give them some time together. Kind of what does that mean, or what can you see out of them, you know, going, you know, in the, in the long term? Yeah, they're special. They're, they're really good. They're different. Uh, What's that running back for Seattle? What's that guy's name uh, that was retired from Seattle? Lynch. Lynch. I mean, he's got that just that juice to him. And uh, inside, outside, breaks tackles, man, plays uh, with passion and um, with a real presence. You don't see it a whole lot, but you know it when you see it. Certainly know it when you don't. But um, he's just got a great presence to him. And a uh, really special player. Uh, he got great speed, great lateral speed, can make you miss in the hole. Uh, excellent ball skills as a receiver. You know, had the touchdown out of the backfield on third and 19. And, uh, you know, makes a great play. Very comfortable, um, confident. And, uh, and then Sims is same way, you know. You know, just you see this tremendous, tremendous uh, upside with him. And uh, like a baby giraffe out there, but uh, he's got speed, he's got length, again, a big arm, good instincts, uh, you know, for a freshman, really, the, the game's slow for him. And, uh, you know, you can see from where he was game one, what they were doing with him to where he is now. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to cause problems for people for sure. Brent, this is Matt again with – uh, ahead, I wanted to ask you, I, I know you don't want to help out any defensive coordinators out there, but when you watch Travis Etienne and what he's doing in the passing game, just how does that stress defenses at, at all levels? <laughs> yeah, it's a tough matchup, you know. 
uh, you know, keep your linebackers out there, plug the A gaps and all that. So it's a tough matchup. You know, I don't, I don't have the answers. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know, you know, what to say other than, you know, good luck. Uh, it's hard. And, um, you know, Travis has really come into his own that way. And, and uh, you know, but there's a lot of other great weapons around him as well. You can't just lock in on him. And, uh, and then Tony does a great job of, of utilizing everybody. So, but uh, he's, you know, he's great with the ball in his hands. And, every, you know, the more times he touches it, the better opportunity there is to create explosive play. So whether that's in the kicking game or uh, as a returner or, or certainly, you know, out of the backfield or handing him the rock. So, um, you know, it's a, I just would just say good luck. You know, it's the biggest thing because he's, he's tough. We'll take one final one for Coach. Brett, with, with five new starters in the back seven, were you expecting this group to, to play as well as it has um, and, and kind of do what it did against Miami this past weekend? I mean, again, I'm, I'm certainly not. Uh, I'm real proud of the guys. Uh, we all are. Um, you know, their growth. I mean, we have, we have a long way to go. And, uh, but it, it's surprised, I don't know, probably expected even more, to be honest. Um, uh, I think Miami more is what we expected the first few games, uh, the consistency and the communication. And, and I know Joseph Charleston didn't play, but, uh, you know, they've they had a good, a good spring and, and again, a good fall camp. And it's a group of guys that again are smart and uh, long and athletic and can run and, and uh, again, have a great sense of humility to them and, and just a great group of guys as far as work ethic and investing time to, know what to do and are just detailed guys. So um, there's a lot more to be had and uh, we got to continue to, to get better and improve in just so many areas. And, uh, but pleased with, um, you know, the progress and the improvement and, um, but, you know, we're just kind of starting, you know, kind of starting uh, to, you know, get challenged and um, there's going to be a variety of challenges. Miami, is its own DNA. Georgia Tech will be its own DNA. Syracuse will be its own DNA. And, um, and so understanding that DNA um, is as important as anything. And then being able to go out and execute against that. So, uh, you know, the veteran, veteran players, experienced players, it's, it's easier uh, to do that week in and week out. Um, experienced players, it's, they understand uh, have a maturity about them uh, in regards to preparation and practice and the film work, and they don't grow weary of that process, which can be very, it's very tough and challenging. If it wasn't, everybody would, would do very well. Every team would, and uh, it's not easy to do. And so you hope that your leadership, which we feel we have good, strong leadership uh, at the at the root of our team and uh, certainly on our defense, and uh, we'll continue to challenge guys and hold, hold guys accountable. And um, I think by playing a lot of players like we do, I think that that creates the buy-in. And uh, you know, I think that helps with team morale. And, and I think it's easier to stay engaged throughout the course of the year uh, because everybody feels like they have a role or they'll have a chance and opportunity to play. Even if it's a very small amount of plays, you know, that's what they love to do. So that's the reward for all the work and the investment. So, um, you know, Yes and no, both. Uh, answering, you know, you, in your question, again, my expectations are to play here. Um, you know, say, ah, they're all young. They're going to play like, you know, junk. But that's not our, really our mindset. So it's never good enough. It's probably closer to our mindset. You know, uh, certainly uh, pleased with the effort, the attitude, and the focus, but certainly not satisfied. We have a long way to go uh, to get better. I mean, we're trying to spend a lot of time on, on, on what isn't good because that's what people are going to try to attack. Um, yeah, you made the play, but, you know, this is what they're going to see. Uh, you, let the, you let the receiver stack you. You got beat at the line. You got lucky under through it. You know, those are the plays that we're, we're talking about in the building today. And uh, because, you know, if you don't, you don't get that right, you know, that's going to rear, you know, uh, its ugly head down the road, uh, so to speak. So, um, I would just say again, uh, you know, please certainly, you know, not satisfied by any stretch.